Um, I'd like to say thank you to everybody for being here for um, this FINOS virtual meetup. Um, and I'd like to introduce um, Heiko Sunderman, um, who's the VP of and Head of Digital Engagement Practice for Wealth and Asset Management, Asset Management for EPAM, um, who are a FINOS member. Um, and uh, Heiko is here today to talk about EPAM Glue, uh, develop, developing a unified and data model for the buy side. Um, but before we actually go into Heiko's um, presentation this afternoon, um, I'd like to let everybody know that we will be giving away two um, FINOS t-shirts as part of the um, virtual event um, and names will be picked at random from people who have actually registered online for this event. And so um, during the actual um, webinar itself, we'll let you know um, who those two people are. Um, and I'd like to remind everybody who, who is here this morning and also this afternoon um, to register on the FINOS um, LinkedIn page and also the FINOS um, Twitter account and also um, su subscribe to uh, FINOS newsletters at finos.org and also uh, visit our Get Involved um, page um, to learn how you can get involved in all of our projects within FINOS um, and also how to become a FINOS contributor to all of our various different projects on github.com forward slash FINOS, which is our organization. Um, so thank you everybody for being here once again. And Heiko, um, I'd like to pass over to you now, if that's okay. Well, thanks for the introduction, James. Um, yes, so EPAM Glue, developing a unified data model for the buy side, that's the topic today. So uh, let me start with the following, just um, good practices to introduce ourselves. I think I personally was introduced nicely by James. Um, maybe just one thing to me, I'm, I joined EPAM two and a half years ago after having spent most of my life at buy side firms, um, the likes of UBS and Deutsche Bank. And now I'm heading um, our asset and wealth management value proposition for them. For everybody that doesn't know EPAM, and um, we're a big company that not a lot of people have heard for if you're not in, in the industry really. Um, it is, uh, we, have, we were founded in 1993, we're quite large, so we are um, now hitting over 30,000 engineers, designers, consultants, um, and we're totaling 35,000 employees worldwide. We have a nice growth story behind us. Um, we've been growing 35, I think it's 36 consecutive quarters now um, by more than 20%. Let's see whether we can make it the next quarter, um, since COVID is is, uh, is also hitting us. But um, so far, fingers crossed, it went well. And um, maybe before I do loads of marketing around EPAM, um, just one thing. So financial services is really our, our strong point and focus area. 23% of our revenues come from financial services. And within financial services, I think it's fair to say that um, Asset and wealth management is the strongest, the strongest sub vertical, and maybe also the more most mature sub vertical of ours, um, in terms of assets, IP, and thought leadership that we have invested in. Um, Given the context of Finos, so EPAM traditionally always was a very um, a very active contrib contributor to open source frameworks. So we're member of the Linux Foundation, we um, traditionally um, contributed a lot to the traditional tech uh, open source frameworks out there. Um, and we're very proud that we are at uh, rank number 14, if you look at GitHub, um, uh, in terms of contributor to open source. And that is, and with that, we're probably the only services company up there um, with the likes of Google, Red Hat, IBM, and the typical sus the usual sub uh, suspects. Now, I think that is the lead over on to asset and wealth management and to our wave platform. So before I start, um, let me let me give you a little bit of business background on what is wave and what is glue and what is glue in the context of wave. So wave is our response to an industry challenge that we're seeing across the board uh, on buy side firms, um, which is mainly driven by um, 
digitalization requirements because buy side firms believe that they need to catch up um, in, in the digital space. And I think that's rightfully, rightfully so. I think we, we saw under investments in the space still, even after seven years in, in the digitalization story, um, we buy side firms are struggling with regulation. That's also nothing new. Um, but the but the key challenge that we're seeing currently is um, uh, driven by both ends regulation and and changing client needs, which is um, getting from value positions to uh, market their fee based advising models. So the industry is moving away from transaction models into fee based advising models, and obviously. It's difficult to uh, to sell the story to the client. Um, please just give me a percentage of your portfolio of your money that I'm managing, um, without actually demonstrating the true value that you that you're bringing to them. And and one of the these values that we're seeing, and one of the client demands that is most important there, is that clients really demand tailored investment services. And what we mean with that is tailored investment services is not your freedom to choose an asset allocation or a model portfolio. Um, and then maybe add a whitelist restriction or a blacklist restriction. They, clients really demand transparent, tailored strategy or um, transparent management of their tailored strategy. And the tailored strategy involves a pre selected point on the risk return uh, profile of the portfolio. And um, obviously, a, a freely, freely selectable asset allocation model. Uh, typical client restrictions in terms of blacklists and buy lists, um, issuer concentration or issuer restrictions, and so on and so on. And even more, um, clients are, whilst they value the, the input of the CIO of the buy side firms, so the chief uh, investment officer, they do come with their own capital market assumptions. And that's another thing. Um, how can we enable clients to actually bring in their biases? Um, and and still have a consistent process to manage their portfolio according to the strategy agreed on. So, if that is the business challenge, the the next question is: Well, how do I do this effectively? How do can I scale this? Right. So, client need is understood. That's clear. They want these tailored services. But how can I, as a buy side firm, effectively manage potentially? Millions of portfolios with an own uh, with a specific strategy behind every portfolio. Obviously, it's not a it's 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 not a response to this challenge to pair a client advisor per client portfolio because that is obviously not a scalable business model. So we what we've been seeing working with the big asset and wealth managers of this world is um, like the UBSs, the Credit Suisses, um, Vanguard's, Fidelities, and so on. We see that these guys are actually, they want to move to um, a more industrialized way of managing the portfolio. And our philosophy to industrialization there is these companies need to embrace portfolio risk-based advisory approaches. And that is the underlying, the underlying philosophy behind the platform that we built at EPAM Wave. We saw we saw the the efforts and the amounts of investment needed at our clients to actually get to a complete front to back industrialized process based on portfolio risk calculations, and we saw that these investments easily um, uh, added up to double digit, if not three digit million um, million investment levels. And our, our conviction was um, that obviously these kinds of investment levels can't be put to the table from tier two, tier three asset managers or wealth managers. And WAVE is the solution for, for this client segment to bring them up to speed quickly. And um, what we built there is quite a few components spanning the, com the entire investment management value chain. And what you see here is our business architecture model for the industry. And the color coding actually that you see here is everything that has this light green shading behind uh, individual business modules that EPAM has invested in or partnered with fintech companies um, uh, that are part of the current state of the ecosystem. So each of these business capabilities is exposing their, their value or their, their capabilities via a nice, uh, via a nice API. And as you as you are all coming from the industry, you're aware that uh, that's another big push in the industry is um, flex, moving to more flexible backend architectures or enterprise architectures and API 
and the API architecture is very is, is a hot topic with, with many of the firms that we're seeing. Now the, the problem that comes with this, and now finally I'm leading over to, to the key topic of this presentation. The problem that comes with this, while API architectures are good and, and definitely the, the right response, it doesn't mean that it really brings down your investment levels or the, the efforts for integrating various modules. We saw with our clients that uh, many of them are adopting best of breed approaches and um, thinking like they can they can scan the market and leverage the, the, all the innovation happening in the fintech sector um, and then just stitch together a value chain proposal as you see it here from the from the business capability side by leveraging all these individual modules because hey most of them have built architectures based on apis but that's that's only part of the story right the integration costs remain in many cases because um I'm often referring to it, one API talks Chinese, the other one talks Italian. Um, and then you still need an integration layer to actually make them talk to each other in the right language. And at that time, so we, we had the same challenge when we built this, when we built this ecosystem of components. And we soon realized, especially when we wanted to partner with fintechs, that we need to that we need to come to a common agreement of a of a common semantic layer, let's put it that way. And this common semantic layer is what we call EPAM Blue. What EPAM Blue actually is, it's it's a it's, it's a data integration layer. It's, it's it's a couple of things, right? Number one, it is it is this common semantic layer. So it's a common conceptual entity model for the buy side uh, for the buy side firms. Um, it is uh, we actually implemented this conceptual entity model um, in a, a transactional um, entity relationship model. And we then, um, uh, we have concrete examples or we have concrete implementations with um, uh, um, tra transactional entity relationship models um, below. And on top of that, we have various analytical modules um, where we at EPAM, we used Apache Ignite. That's um, obviously we're in, uh, technology agnostic on that layer, but the whole purpose was um, we saw these requirements in those digitalization initiatives and we saw the amount of effort uh, going in there. And then some of these initiatives, um, while they provided the, the, the business value uh, via their APIs, they didn't really were, they, they didn't were adhering to the performance requirements that you would see um, the clients are expecting when they're using self-service self -service analytics or um, uh, self-service uh, stress testing and so on of their portfolios. So that was uh, another focus apart from building this common semantic layer. Uh, the other focus is how can we how can we build this um, or implement this um, so that it really adheres to this uh, um, to these re performance requirements that we're seeing, and that means we need to be able to calculate risk or your performance in sub seconds rather than uh, 10 minutes as it currently takes with many of the core banking systems so what we when we looked at when we looked at this entity model obviously we were covering the we were covering the um the key entities that we needed for our for for our purposes for our to support our business capabilities that i that i showed you earlier um what we when we thought about um, let's let's move our open source DNA also to the, 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 uh, those domain solutions like Wave, we thought what would make sense to um, to add as a first contribution. And we've been reaching out to Finos and asked them: Is would Finos or would the community be interested in uh, in a buy side project? Um, uh, or in a project for the buy side, and and the first logical component that we are trying to open source, or that we that we want to test with the community, whether that makes sense, is to contribute EPAM Blue as a um, as a model, um, and uh, and maybe hopefully with the help of the community, extend it further, covering more entities than we than we currently do. So the, the generic concepts that we that obviously you need to model that you need to bring in apart from the actual business business rationale uh, or the, the the business concepts you need to being a buy side firms you need to um, cover a couple of other other bits like in the non-functional area 
for example, uh, PII, so um, data secrecy and person information secrecy is, is a core topic um, where, we in, uh, where we thought about various approaches to how can we really ensure this. You need to understand that our clients are often the offshore private banks as well. So that uh, data privacy and data secrecy is a, is a hot topic there. And obviously these, these GDPR related topics and PII regulation topics are deeply inbuilt into the, when we, when we actually started modeling the uh, EPAM Blue data model. Other topics, I mean, that is a, a really generic one, language support. I think that comes, uh, that, that, is, that is clear. I mean, also lang language support was modeled in from the beginning. And uh, this one makes, this one is a little bit more interesting. That is like when we've been working with the various buy side firms, um, one thing that is a key driver behind our investment management philosophy is obviously how the CIO um, models his uh, capital market assumptions and how he brings that across to the, to the portfolio management side of things. And that um, results in that we need to deal with multiple asset classification models. Um, and, and we saw that this flexibility is needed. So we, our response to that is what we call hierarchical object breakdown structures, which is actually bringing this flexibility um, to, uh, to at runtime, uh, add new classifications to your instrument data um, or, uh, or add new classifications like ESG, in, uh, ESG investment topics um, uh, to your in investment universe. And, and with these hierarchical object breakdown structures, we're actually very, very flexible in terms of how to model that. It could be we're actually completely open um, on how many hierarchy levels you want to employ and also how broad the hierarchy then really is. So the, and I'm hoping, by the way, I'm rushing through this. I'm um, James, I'm hoping that you, if there are questions coming from the community, please read them directly to me. Otherwise I'll, I'll rattle through. And uh, I'll keep yes. so, so thank you very much for, for inviting questions from the community. So uh, whilst um, Heiko actually mentions that, if um, people do have questions, feel free to put them into the chat um, and then I can relay them on during the Q&A. And also Heiko, um, in the bottom right, I'm not sure whether you've got a notification that's showing on your screen, but we've got um, a grey yeah. box. There we go, fixed. Thank you very I just, much. I just killed it. Thank you. So, That's perfect. Uh, so obviously in this in this brief session, right, we can't go over all the details of the model. I think what we what we really want to get from the community is number one, we are aware that Finos so far was very strong on the on the sell side. So we saw many projects related to uh, trading platforms, instrument data management um, and, and the likes. Um, what we what, with this presentation and and giving you this this wider overview of what Wave is, we we really wanted to test the uh, the appetite of the community to see whether whether it really makes sense to place a buy side project on the um, or to, to promote a buy side project via Finos. While we're very very happily open sourcing and we we truly want to want to get the feedback from the community. Obviously, we don't want to to run the projects all by ourselves. We're really hoping for active community involvement. And I think for us, that is the key purpose of this presentation to test the appetite of the community to, to run buy side projects. Having said that, a little bit high level overview about the, the main, the key domain objects that we're dealing with um, for uh, supporting this value chain that I showed earlier. Um, and this is obviously, it's, it's actually more than 100,000 feet perspective. Um, it's just giving you a very, very, very high level entity overview. Um, and that is obviously covering the whole business partner section. Um, um, if you're working at buy side firms, you probably, uh, that's a hot topic like with many of our clients. Many of our clients are now trying to move away from, um, from portfolio centric to partner centric approaches. Our model is actually a very partner-centric one, and I'll, I'll allude to that um, in the next slide on, on what we actually mean with partner-centric. And the whole portfolio construct is obviously in there, financial accounting with all the complexities that come with this one. Um, uh, 
Uh, instrument data management, as I mentioned, is an important one because it is um, the driver of uh, how to manage your investment universe, how the how the CIO is actually transporting this capital market assumption views. And we need to have the flexibility in there to actually um, provide a standard model that is flexible enough to, to cover the various um, real life industry models that we're seeing there. And then uh, Another strong point and another thing which is of uh, probably extremely important in the whole concept or a concept of wave is our is our approach to how to model um, investment policy statements or the actual investment strategy and how to run the how to um, detect tracking errors um, of a portfolio that is drifting um, and alert the uh, the advisor and the client about about those drifts. And this is not only portfolio drifts in terms of risk return profile, that is um, also drifts um, that would lead to um, breaking some of the other investment policies that the client and the advisor has agreed on, be it an uh, issue of concentration policy, be it a currency concentration overview uh, policy, be it a whitelist, be it a blacklist, and, and many other rules. And we have a very flexible, a flexible model to A, Add rules to the existing um, to the existing uh, rule domains that we're having, but also um, allowing uh, companies to add completely new rules that we haven't thought about. Um, business partner model. So, as I mentioned, uh, business partner, especially for wealth managers, is is a beast in its own right because the relationships that we typically see. Um, uh, uh, the types of relationships that we're seeing in the industry are enormously complex. And if you're working on the wealth management side, I don't need to educate you there. Um, but uh, if you're coming from asset management, then you're probably not as not as if, not as familiar with this. But um, the, the complexity of the relationships, um, which is also driving uh, regulatory requirements and regulatory uh, regulatory rules, um, is is enormous. And I think we've been tackling many of these problems. We saw them in real life. We actually distilled the, we distilled all all our learnings into how to best model this uh, this person model. We also have tested that with various core banking providers, and not only whether that whether they they can live with this model, but also how to extract data from ledger system and core bankings into our model. So we do have standard connectors also as part of Wave that um, would get this data out into the into our person model. The types of relationships that you need to manage, um, just to give you a quick real life overview. I mean, obviously, legal entities such as single person relationships that's a non non brainer, a no brainer. But it really gets quickly complicated if you have complex trust relationships, multi person relationships. Um, and, and how to manage them, and also how to manage the, the bank response to them. So who's who's in contact with which part of this partner structure from the bank side, and um, who can who's allowed to see what? And uh, from the reg regulatory perspective, how can we test, for example, um, uh, person risks um, by uh, exposures to certain com uh, com uh, companies or? being indirectly exposed to a politically exposed person via being in the same company and so on and so on. Strategy and uh, maybe and I know, as I said, right, conscious of time, I would love to deep dive into these topics. What I actually want to drive out out from this is, um, is test the interest, as I mentioned, but two, two final sentences on strategy, um, because that is the base of our investment philosophy that we're um, employing in WAVE. Typically, what you see out there are, and that is true for many, many asset managers, wealth managers, or even robot advisors out there, most of them um, define a strategy as an asset allocation. And the asset allocation being at the center of the strategy definition of um, how to manage a portfolio for the client. I think the we're clearly moving away from this in wave. Um, we actually try to introduce a completely, a much more modern, as in our thinking, way to, to defining investment strategies uh, with it, together with the client. And that is, in our thinking, an investment strategy is mainly a risk return profile of the portfolio. And an asset allocation um, um, is really a, 
the derivative of this uh, of this risk return profile that the client has selected, and this risk return profile might even uh, um, might even take to into account, as I mentioned earlier, uh, client specific capital market assumptions. So in in our model, an asset allocation is really just nothing else but another restriction. So you can give um, the model takes in um, asset allocation bandwidth on asset class level. And but for us, it's really nothing else um, than, for example, an interior concentration barrier or um, or a currency uh, a currency exposure um, barrier that uh, that we model as restrictions in our data model. So to wrap up, um, so we're we're obviously passionate around what we're doing. We're really believing that with Wave, we're bringing in a couple of truly groundbreaking new capabilities to our clients. We're marketing them as software accelerators, so we're not taking licenses, and we're, we're actually planning to open source quite some of them in future. Uh, as a starting point, we really looked at, um, let's really bring the foundation to the community, which is this common entity model, uh, because we see that this is one of the bits where companies are currently struggling, because it forms the basis of their digitalization or platform modernization strategies. With this, I think I would like to I would like to open it up to any questions or ideas or feedback in terms of whether that's interesting for the community at all. Um, please, please be open and uh, I'm here for questions. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Heike. Um, so we don't have anything directly in the chat, which means that I'm more than happy to invite um, anybody to come off mute and maybe ask the question directly. Anybody? Hi, I have a question. Uh, Hi, Tasha. Yes. Hi, this is uh, Tasha Elson from Finos. Thank you. That, that was um, a, a great presentation. I go really interesting. I, I was just wondering: is um, is this largely is the the idea that uh, uh, the um, buy side uses this internally for their their modeling and their pol and their um, processes, or can it also be used to pass information um, between you know, asset managers and their clients or between asset managers uh, themselves, for example, you know, passing a, a, a portfolio or a, a construct? It's, it's really interesting that you mentioned this because funnily, I just, as part of this Finos presentation, actually it already gave us a lead and I had a conversation with a, with a COO of an asset manager in, in APAC today and he asked me more or less the same question, right? So obviously, um, yes, we would love to, be, obviously, we would love to be waived to be the industry standards, right? And that the industry standards would then also fuel um, cross company communication um, and so on. Uh, it's a little bit, uh, we're not power monger enough. I think that needs to be decided by the industry itself or by, by Finos. Maybe Finos can help to actually drive the standardization bit. But yes, it is, it would actually help a lot. Um, in, uh, in API strategies and in API monetization strategies for the industry. What we're seeing is really um, many of our clients are not only trying to employ new architectures to, to be more flexible and do rapid application development on their end, but they're really looking at when we're building business capabilities and exposing them as API, that these APIs are not only driving the internal processes and internal GUIs, but they want to open that up for, uh, for B2B scenarios and um, uh, offer their services directly to, to other asset managers or to use them as communication, as a means of communication. For example, passing, passing as you mentioned, passing portfolios back and forth between asset managers. That's, that's really helpful, thank you. Very much for that, Tosha. Um, so we've got a, a couple of minutes left, which means that we can maybe take one or two more questions. Um, so bearing in mind that Heiko has given the presentation to understand the, the wider open source appetite for um, EPAM to contribute Blue to open source. Um, so if there's any feedback, you know, from people who are attending today. Um, regarding you know the the value of epam glue and bring it into open source feel free to give your feedback on this call and 
James, if they want to get in touch offline, what's the best way to do that? Do we want to put an email address or um, or something into chat? Absolutely. So um, there are a couple of ways in which we can um, get in contact with people. So um, I can give my email address in chat. Um, Aaron will also, so Aaron or Chris von Finos will also be putting um, Heiko's presentation on LinkedIn. And so maybe you can ask your question in the comments on LinkedIn. Um, and then also um, after the presentation, I can get in contact with you if you want to, you know, get in contact um, in some other way. We do have your details. Um, yeah, and, and if I may add, right, I mean, obviously talking about data and entity models is a, is a pretty dry topic. Um, so if, if there's appetite in this in general about investment management ecosystems, and, and as I said, Glue is just the basis for this um, ecosystem that we build at EPAM. If there's interest in other examples there, and if there's if, if the community believes that it makes sense to open source other of our modules, very happy to to give actually more lively demos of running software with GUIs and, and more talking about the business concepts behind it. So please feel free to reach out. Um, I'm happy to take questions offline and Again, reiterating what we're really interested in is their appetite. Is there are there? We believe it would be great to have a, an open source project around this, but obviously uh, it must be. We need to really engage the wider community, and we need your interest in that. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, Heike. Um, and the team of just the info at finos.org as well, um, which actually sends an email to the distributed team here at Finos. Um, so thank you very much, Heike. Um, that's an extremely interesting um, presentation that you've given um, this afternoon. And I very much um, thank you for, for stepping forward with um, this potential contribution into open source and Finos. Um, if there's anything that anybody else would like to say um, before we leave? Absolutely. So, so do you have the people um, who have been drawn for t-shirts, um, Aaron, by any chance? Yes, um, Ron, I'm going to mess these up. I apologize. Um, Lindgren from FOSS ID and Michelle Pollan. Um, Maybe from Vexit. Um, uh, Alexandra will get in touch with both of you about uh, getting your addresses so that we can send you uh, Finos t-shirts. Amazing. Thank you very much for, for doing the randomizing behind the scenes of that as well and, and coming up with these two names. So um, you'll be getting your Finos t-shirts um, from Alexandra. Thank you very much. Um, and once again, thank you very much, Heike. Um, that was that was amazing. And I really appreciate you um, giving that talk this afternoon. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Heike. That was great. Thanks yeah. a lot. And thank you, everybody, for attending. And please look out um, for more uh, notifications on LinkedIn, Twitter, and through uh, This Week of Finos for up and coming um, virtual meetups um, from the Finos team. Thank you, everybody. All the best. Mm -hmm.